Hello and welcome to Bloomberg Quint Live here at the World Economic Forum's annual summit. I have with me K.V. Kamath, a man who needs no introduction, but his new avatar, I will still specify, as president of the New Development Bank, uh, which is where he's been spending his time for the last few years uh, and will be back in India, as he tells me, later next year. That is 2020. Sure. That's correct. Right. Mr. Kamath, thank you so much for speaking thank to you. us here at Bloomberg Quint. It's very cold. It's minus 14 yes. degrees, so you're braving it. Thanks for that. I'll start with a broader question on the quality of growth in the Indian economy. We're at seven, seven and a half percent. You know, everyone in the world is saying, wow, that's, you know, great growth rate. Uh, but we still haven't seemed to be able to break out of that band of six to eight percent. We've done that very briefly about 10 years ago. Uh, why do you believe that we're still not able to accelerate growth to the levels that we desperately need to? And what do you make of the quality of this growth? The last few years have been driven largely by consumption and public expenditure and not enough private investment. I think you uh, hit the nail on the head. Uh, uh, growth has been uh, driven by consumption. That keeps the momentum going. So that also gives you the floor. The floor for India probably, given where we are, is uh, 7% plus. Now, how do you get to 10%? That's the aspirational number. I think for that you need investment. And what type of investment? Uh, investment basically, primarily in the infrastructure, because that's where most of job creation will happen. <laughs> now, the good news is that you have such a lot to do on the infrastructure front, whether it is in roads, whether it's in highways, whether it's in rural roads, <laughs> in, on the power front, particularly now the green uh, energy initiatives that are there. And in almost every, every area that you can look at, there is a growth opportunity, which is uh, not only economy positive in the sense that it will drive economic momentum during the act of investment, create jobs during the act of investment, and thereafter, once the fruits of investments, uh, you know, you see those, uh, you spur, further spur economic growth. So opportunity is huge. Somewhere, I think we need to focus on driving that opportunity, which probably has been a challenge over uh, the last uh, many years. Yeah, what is your assessment of that particular challenge? For instance, one of the largest agencies we had in the country that was involved in the business of financing infrastructure, you know, has seen uh, what one might call a spectacular collapse last year, which is ILNFS is what I'm referring to. I'm not asking you for a specific comment on ILNFS, but what new model of infrastructure financing needs to get developed uh, that will help, you know, move us from 7% to 10% and make the best of this opportunity you've described? Well, I think uh, there are two, two parts of the equation. The first part is to make sure that uh, the plain rules by which uh, you set up a business are uh, clear and uh, that uh, they are there uh, and will endure. I think that confidence probably uh, the uh, investors uh, somewhere you know, they lost that confidence. This goes back many years. Right. And that confidence has not come back because there's still a cleanup going on of that uh, challenge that was there uh, during that period of time. So do you mean mispricing? Uh, no, I, I didn't mean, uh, no, no, I didn't mean, so what I'm saying is, uh, if, you, if you look back four or five years, you had so-called standard projects. Right. Now, have those standard projects been uh, you know, you know, brought on stream uh, in a logical manner? Many have, but there's a lot more to do. But till that is done, uh, entrepreneurs who set up industry and the, the banks which fund industry will have second thoughts. That's what's happening. In the interim, what has the government done? Government has done a lot of positive things. They have taken on the act of investment by themselves. Right. But government can only go thus far. You need the private sector to actually provide the momentum for growth. So I guess there is a correction that is needed to be done. The context of the bank's ability to uh, lend and the confidence with they will, uh, you know, they, and the confidence with which they will be able to lend, and that correction once it happens, I think you will have. A but so, what will that correction be? I mean, you know, wasn't weren't agencies like IL and FS supposed to play that part of bringing government and private sector Again, together? Uh, without taking any names, I will put it this way: what is required is to uh, instill confidence in uh, not only the banking sector, capital markets, domestic, but also global investors to come in and uh, take stakes in this business. Because I don't think without the interplay of all these three uh, set of players, we will get the momentum that we want on the infrastructure but side. But you don't think the financing structures, the way PPAs are designed, you know, I remember Finance Minister Arun Jaitley in his very first budget in 2014 had brought up the need to revisit the entire PPA structure. I'm not sure we've made much progress when it comes to large projects over the last five years, maybe because of the, it's, it's, you know, the sort of the cloud hanging over infrastructure. Yeah, it is, but that hasn't changed. That is one of the reasons, but I think uh, there are several reasons. Because, uh, for example, on roads, there has to be clarity in terms of uh, the tolling and so on. Now with the NHAI, 
operating roads and successfully operating roads. I think that gives a, a demonstration effect to new people who want to come in. That is why the strategy of NHI, you know, putting these uh, roads for sale and uh, you know, getting their say money's, money's circulated so mm -hmm. that they can invest in fresh air is, is a good is a good example, and which can be then. Uh, which could then provide a whole lot of confidence boosting to the private sector. Okay. But we have not yet seen that in the power sector, because these two will be the key things. Well, I shouldn't say not seen it in the power sector, not seen it in the conventional power sector, but you're seeing it in uh, the whole uh, green area. Okay, okay. So, uh, at the NDB, you have sanctioned about 8 billion in loans, about two and a half already in India, and another two and a half, I understand, that will come uh, to India come again. Yeah, so, you're look, looking at about $5 billion of uh, financing uh, arrangements for infrastructure in India. What kind of projects, what kind of partnerships have you been able to you know, inculcate through this process very, that you think will be a success? Very interesting uh, question. See, we are primarily stuck close to our knitting, that is infrastructure. So our uh, assistance has been in the road sector, in uh, highways, in uh, uh, rural roads, in uh, rural drinking water, uh, repair of uh, water systems, large canals and uh, the like. Uh, and indeed, uh, this year as we go along, we will look at diversifying. In one particular state, we are redoing all the bridges uh, in that state, virtually all the bridges in that state, providing assistance for upgrading them. And these are them. part grants, part loans? So these are loans. All, all, loans. all are loans. All at, are what, loans. at what terms? At sir? the typical loans at an MDB loans, which is about half percent over uh, okay. the, uh, our borrowing cost. Half percent over your borrowing, borrowing cost. cost. So what does that work out to you, uh, you know, on an well, average on, basis? Well, on LIBOR today, it will be LIBOR plus, say, half percent or so. So okay. it's a very attractive rate. And, and these are five, eight, ten year projects? We would love them to be longer, but uh, the choice is the borrower. So it could be um, 15, 20 years. I would think that's the ideal time frame for most of these projects. Okay. All right. Uh, one, two quick questions about India. Uh, one, actually one about India and one about ICICI Bank. Last year, what we've also seen happen in India is, uh, to some extent, several questions being raised about institutional independence. You would have watched what happened with, uh, you know, the, the press conference we saw that the senior judiciary hold in the beginning of the year, what's gone on with the CBI, and then eventually the exit of, uh, you know, Governor Ujit Patel at the RBI. Were you disheartened by what you saw happen to the RBI last year? I think, uh, being where I am, I should not be commenting on any of these things. Uh, I will uh, probably comment on the need to get uh, interest rates in uh, harmony because we are talking of the economy. I think we need to get uh, interest rates to uh, a level where economic activity becomes, uh, you know, really burgeoning. And uh, the other point that I want to make is uh, uh, good steps in terms of uh, 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 the debt resolution uh, structures that have been put in place. But we need something else to happen. Mr. Kamath, you've been an institution building man. Yeah. Were you not disheartened by what you saw happen at RBI last year? Let me put it this way. I would uh, probably bypass that question, honestly, okay. and talk more in terms of the need to get interest rates aligned. Because what I'm truly worried about is, if an NPA, you know, God forbid, happens in India, uh, in six years it doubles, and then you carry the burden in your life. Just want to contrast with what happens in China, because interest rates are half that of India. An NPA can be nurtured over 12 years and put back to productive use. And in 12 years, you have an interest. You have not only an interest rate, interest rate cycle, but you also have an economic cycle which works for common good. So I think uh, going forward, uh, we need to look at our interest rate structure very carefully if, if we aspire for the 10% growth that we are talking about. All right, fair. Last question. Again, I think you might choose not to answer this, but I'll ask you nonetheless. The events that took place at ICICI Bank over the course of the last year have raised several questions. The cloud over the CEO and managing director, Chanda Kochar. In fact, today, even as we speak, there are raids being carried out, uh, you know, at one of the borrowers. Uh, that was part of the story that, you know, went on all through the last year. The issues with the board not being able to grapple with this uh, sufficiently. Uh, you know, when you saw what went on at ICICI Bank, did you feel that the institution had lacked the ability to deal with this? Again, it's not proper for me to comment. Uh, you had Mr. Kamath, you built uh, that bank. Yeah, I know that. Uh, I think uh, it's not proper for me to comment at this stage. It's for the board and uh, the bank to respond. But Thank do you, you believe Monica. that the... Oh, Thank you. There's, okay, all right. We'll leave it there. Thank you so Thank much you. for your time. Thanks. Bye.